Alright, what is up you guys? And of course, as always, welcome back to an episode of Who Was Really Better? And this week, we are covering, of course, the monsters, the abominations, really, of Generation 8 in Dracovish vs. Dracosalt. Now, before going in, I do have a guest host with me, which is a personal friend of mine and a person that I believe is one of the more forefront players when it comes to drafting environment. He owns the Draft League NL site, he also owns the EON League and the UBL League, and has been a part of high tier leagues as a whole. So if anything, if you want really good Draft League content, he is your man, and it's the guy from the Netherlands, the Automatic. So really happy to have him around, as he of course is one of the persons that I really really respect both as a force content creator but also just personal opinions overall when it comes to pokemon and how he debates them and considering that dracovish is looking to be banned in smoke and ou i felt this was a golden opportunity to define which one of course of these is better as they fundamentally are working quite the same but also how he sees it in a drafting environment considering he sets the community standards for most draft league environments. With that said, I'm gonna cover the mood pool stats and niches, and he's gonna actually fill out which one is better and also why he thinks that is and based on draft league performance. So with that said, let's start off with the Pokemon introduced first in decks, and that I believe is the Vish. Now, Dracovish own a very, very rare and unique water dragon typing. It is so rare that the ones that I can think back in my mind is Palkia and Kingdra. And the reason it's so rare and actually quite good is because it's one of those backbone type combination. It means basically that whatever issue water has is resolved, and whatever dragon has is resolved. While not as vast, it's easy to see here that the water type is electric and um, grass weakness are no longer present, and dragon's weakness to ice is no longer present. We have resistance in fire and water, and of course steel. And the weaknesses that are still leftovers are Dragon and Fairy. So overall, defensive enough if you ask me. When it comes to stat distribution, it isn't necessarily that impressive. And um, I guess that's a good thing to an extent. As we have a split in the 90 in its HP and attack. Then defense at 100, special attack in 70, 80 in special defense and 75 in speed. 75 in speed is always going to be great because of the issues with Dracovish and why it is to be deemed quite viable. But overall, I would say it is on the bulkier side. The 90 in HP to get it with a defense of 100 is quite impressive. And besides that, you know, no fair attack, I guess. But it, yeah, it doesn't hit necessarily that hard. However, it has abilities to really, really complicate things for it. Sand Rush, which is not available, is a move that, or an ability that really going to be interesting in future on. But Strong Jaw and Water Absorb is where it's at. And Water Absorb works well for it. it you know, getting some type of recovery since it do lack it. But Strong Jaw, of course, is where it's at, basically because of a move that it gets that it gets boosted by 50%, basically giving it another stab combination, much like that ability in, of course, Strong Jaw. And yeah, you know, I believe that's really all we need to say about its ability, because it comes around here in the Moopoo list. So when it comes to Moopoo, like basically what I want to cover is the relevant moves here, and when it boils down to that, the Vicious Rend is where it's at, it's at 85 base power, it gets double power if you move before the opponent, or if the opponent switches out, or if the opponent using a private move, then it will do double the power, which means smack. <laughs> Basically, it is the main reason this is so tough, and combine it with Strong Jaw, double the power on that, plus a stab combination. Ooh, it's the reason the a choice better variant of Dracovish can actually do it KO a Toxapex on the switch and a defensive one at that, and why people are scared of it, because basically it has no responses if you decide to switch out against it. Besides that, what boosts uh, moves that boost its further strong ability are moves like Crunch, Ice Fang, Psychic Fangs, which is really great for it, very very good fillers, and its best stab combination are the likes of Dragon Rush and Outrage, which are fair and more probably in a, I would say a Lee environment, but also Dynamax meta, where a Dragon Stab could be beneficial besides spam the likes of a water move all the time. Um, it also learns the likes of Earthquake, Low Kick, and uh, Leech Life. It also gets Liquidation and uh, Waterfall, I believe. 
and uh, those work. Like I said, like it has a broad move pool of interest. It just it doesn't necessarily ever use them because of the benefit of fishes rend all the time. Um, one thing should definitely be covered that I would dealt with that I think is very tough with it is that you can predict very wrong versus Dragovich. Uh, I always use something like Jellicent to be able to parry that fish's rend, and then, you know, it always worked against me because if the opponent predicts right and it isn't a scarfed variant of Dragovich, which is usually is something very good versus me since I play rather aggressive and hyper offensively, so I don't have a defensive backbone. If I go for the defensive route and they decide anyway to go for a choice banner variant, I'm still screwed. If they go for choice scarf, I could fit it off, but most likely I won't. So it's a very tough decision to deal with the Dracovich because of these type of environments. Uh, while it doesn't have a strong offensive stat to talk about, just the fish's ran spam is something that's really tough. And a combination of strong jaw and um, like the base attack is quite fair for a few of its moves. If you want to go for a more defensive route, you are able to do something with Super Fang and just be scalding and whatnot. And you, that could be very, very tough in a league environment. But besides that, Dracovich has only one set and two combinations of items with that set. And it's the reason it is in the suspect and the reason I want to talk about it now because it is a Pokemon of interest as it is so strong. But another Pokemon are just as scary and it's recently we have him here. And that is Dracosalt. How do Dracosalt hold up versus Dracovish? And yeah, Dracovish, combination of Electric and Dragon, is actually quite nice. While it isn't like a previous typing, a backbone typing, it gets a plethora of resistances. Resistance to the lights of Electric, resistant Fire, Flying, Grass, Steel and Water, while being weak to Dragon, Fairy, Ground and Ice. So yeah, you have somewhat of a mammo issue going on here. And quite frankly, there are a lot of defensive things to watch out for, and um, luckily for us, I guess, Dracosalt has a quite a defensive back for much like Dracovich. Knight base in its HP, 100 instead of its attacks, so slightly stronger than Knight in its defense instead, and special attack at, at 80, which is quite right, and special defense at 70, and speed at 75, so... Not as bulky, but probably more offensively capable by default, but... No, we're looking upon the abilities to define that, don't we? So first of all, more Sand Rush here, which isn't released. Will be very interesting to see this guy with Sand Rush. Then we have Hustle and Volt Absorb. Volt Absorb could be very interesting, mainly because 100 base attack do allow you to be offensively capable anyway. And of course, it does neglect some of the electric type, looking at the likes of Serra It is actually able to do to this mixed defense, to actually push that Pokemon back quite naturally. Um, but you know... Hustle is quite nice and always relevant as it does basically lower your accuracy by 20% but gives you a stab boost of 50% of all of your moves, which is basically a, a strong jaw but for all moves, but of risk of course missing. But overall I think that's a great ability, it was a reach was banned from the UU, it was because it really didn't have a switch in naturally, it performs very much like Rakovich in the Smogon and it's for good reasons that this Pokemon is such a scary Pokemon to be dealing with if you give it the chance of course be fending off against it. Now much like Dragovish, Dracosalt gets a similar move to Fish's Run which is called Bolt Beak. Bolt Beak basically electric based and hits for the double stab if you move first or if the pilot and whatnot. Awesome move, really good for it to combine that with Hustle. Yeah, it is your Fish's Rend of the Dragosalt. But besides that, Dragosalt's move pool is actually broader and more relevant than Dracovish, and has a lot to do with that it has Hustle and stuff to kind of complement of actually hurting him slightly more than Dracovish could do overall. Uh, so we're looking at the likes of Air Lace, uh, Pluck, Dragon Tail, Discharge, Pulpic, of course, uh, Dragon Rush, Mega Kick, and we have Fast Spin, which is you know, annoying enough to be able to lock in a Pokemon to do a finishing job. Thunder Wave, you did a little bit of a Yellow Magic, Rock Slide, Facade, Rock Tomb and Rock Blast, Fire Fang, Bulldoze, Brutal, Brutal Swing, Stopping Tantrum, which is great together with Bolt Week, Breaking Swipe, Body Slam, Flame Forward, Low Kick, Thunderbolt and Thunder, one of the few electric to get Earthquake, which is basically why I mentioned Serora before, because what do you know, it might actually just stop it on its track. Then we have Fire Blast, Substitute, Outrage, Iron Tail, Taunt, Dragon Claw and Pulse, Earth Power, Stone Edge, Electro Ball, Wild Charge and High Horse Power. So overall, Dracosult has absolutely stronger move pool here. And it is a shame it didn't get Volt Switch. I would definitely would have seen some way of actually piloting around. But once it comes in, it's here to stay. And while it doesn't have any way of boosting itself at all, 
one really has to consider the things he can do. Thunderwave together with Bolt Beak is one of the nastiest combinations I've ever been forced to fend off against. And it really, really makes me very scared of Dragon Soul because if it's done right, it basically hopes that Hustle doesn't kick in. And that is not a pleasant place to be in. And of course, with the like of Low Kick, there is really no electric times going in this thing. However, ground types is a defined there's a combination that do kind of wall this Pokemon, and even though Outrage together with Hustle can do a significant chunk of the damage, not getting the benefit of Bolt Peak, it's always tough to deal with. But don't say my word for it. Um, we're gonna actually listen to Automatic here and his definition of which one of these two necessarily are better. So with that said, Automatic, hit it off. Unlike any other generation, the premier fossil Pokemon in Dracofish and Dracozolt from Generation 8 are actually very much alike. This is something Game Freak hasn't done all that often, with fossil Pokemon most of the time just being different or doing different jobs. But with Dracofish and Dracozolt, they very much fulfill the same job, even though it are different Pokemon. However, Dracofish still seems to get better results than Dracozolt, and I will go over why that is shortly. But first, let's look at the similarities between those two Pokemon. They both share the same speed tier at 75 base speed, which isn't all too great, but probably we should be happy for the speed tier being 75, and again I will explain later why that is the case. Both also have a signature move of 85 base power that does double in base power if it moves before its target, and they also have a ability that makes their de dedicated move that they click even more powerful with a 1.5 boost. And of course they both share the dragon typing but they both don't really utilize it all too much. Of course both get access to Outrage and sometimes click it, but the main thing that these fossils do is click their signature move and either Ball Peak or Fish's Rant. Of course one thing to keep in mind though is that a Drake Assault probably has the worst of the abilities from those two, even though Hustle does give the 1.5 boost in um, in Bolt Beak as strong job does for Fish's Rant. Fish's Rant does not miss because it's just the 1.5 base move um, that it does get for biting based attacks. However, the Drake Assault with Hustle still gets a 0.8 chance to miss, which you don't really want to go that route. Also, the other downside is that Hustle will affect every single move, meaning that there is almost no way of guarantee hitting moves with Drake Assault unless you're gonna run like Aerial Ace or something, which is something that you really want to do. There also is another reason why Drake of Fish does stand out over Drake Assault. Even though Drake Assault does have the higher base attack, so theoretically, Drake Assault should always hit harder than Drake of Fish if it hits. But again, that's if it hits. And also another big thing is that it's easier to switch in on Drake Assault than it is on Draco Fish, even though it does hit harder. This is because of the move that they spam. Bolt Beak is still an electric type move, and to electric types we still have a full typing that is immune to it in ground typing, something that Draco Fish does not have to worry about. Of course, both have to worry about immunity abilities, like for example Storm Drain and Water Absorb for Draco Fish and also the uh, Volt Absorb for Drake Assault, but that's much less to worry about. You don't have an entire typing you have to worry about. And Drake of Fish may be a water type and also spamming a water type move, that does not necessarily mean that water or grass type that are used to switch in with that take those hits. Especially if Drake of Fish is able to run Choice Band, water types like Toxapax will just get two shotted like it's nothing, even with max defense. That also goes to show how much of a breaker Dracofish is, and also the potential Drake Assault had wasn't it that its signature move again is blocked by ground types, which are very popular in the format since a lot of ground types are dedicated rock setters on, on teams in the Dreadfleet format, and of course people still don't want their team to be Volt switched on, so that's the reason why they are going to run the, um, the ground types on their team and probably value it during the draft. And of course there is also the issue of how do you actually counter Dracofish in this format. And I already hinted at it, um, and that's the speed. And the same goes for Dracofish and Dracosault. Outside of the ground typing, you counter them in a very similar way. And that's that both don't really have switch hints, again, barring Dracosaults for ground types. You don't, you're not really going to switch in. Again, 
especially if you allow them to be choice banded, you're not gonna have a fun day. The big things that you can do against these type of Pokemon is make sure that they cannot flourish in what they do. And that means that defensive play, especially against Dragonfish, most of the time isn't the way to go versus Dragonfish. Its speed here at 75 is something that you should take advantage of. And that is for the reason that if you move first, Vicious Rant will not get its boost, and therefore only being 85 base power. Of course, it will still hit hard, but not nearly as hard as when you move last. The good thing for this is that a lot of Pokemon can actually be speed creep to outspeed Dracofish, because again, 75 base speed is not all that high. So, assuming Dracofish is not Choice Scarf, there are a lot of teams that can EV their Pokemon to have at least 5 or maybe even 6 of the Pokemon that they bring be faster than Dracofish. And even if Dracofish is Choice Scarf, of course, it's not the way that you go with a full Choice Scarf team. But almost every Choice Scarf user that would make sense to bring to a team has the potential to outspeed and also revenge skill a Dracofish. So that's something to keep in mind. This is a Pokemon that you want to be aggressive against and a Pokemon that you want to beat offensively to make sure it doesn't get the click buttons on your team. If you think you can counter this thing by just switch, keep switching in bulky waters or grass types, you're probably going to have a bad day versus Dracofish. Also, one thing that Dracofish really does is, because of this, is centralizing in a draft. Because at the moment Dracofish gets drafted, which it always gets, every team is starting to look for their water immunities. Because at least that prevents Dracofish from just mindlessly running Choice Band or uh, Choice Scarf Fish's rant. Of course, this has been a trend we've seen a long time, so Dracofish isn't nearly always able to run its best set. But again, you don't want to be that guy where you don't end up with water immunity, and therefore Dracofish can just spam its signature move. Thank you so much for that automatic. You know, as always, really, when it comes to this draft league arm, I really, while I have some farther definition of what they can do, automatic just knocks it out of park, as you guys really recognize there. And that's basically what the dialogue boils down to here is that, yeah, Salt has all the benefits of doing really well, but Vish always will do well. And I think that's the issue and the reason Vish kind of win here is because Salt, while being, for me at least, a Pokemon I would prefer by definition, Vish really just brings it home. It has a lot less switch-ins, and even if it has, it might actually not be beneficial enough because there is no immunity to the damage I put besides Stall Grab and Water Absorb. And there are so few in between to get that, and as Automatic was kind of pushing for, it becomes over-centralized because you always have to have a Pokemon dedicated to deal with Dracovish. We don't have that with Salt, and while Salt is very tough to be dealing with, it has defined switch-ins. Um, so yeah, like I said, Salt for me is a Pokemon I would just prefer and really like more overall. But I can't deny Vish's success in both Smoke and OU and Draft League. I think Wolfie kind of refined in Draft League where teams were just a bit oblivious to the damage I put just to be destroyed by it. And, you know, here we are today debating whether or not it's even going to stay in Draft League because of that over-centralization. So, with that said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode and got a grasp of why v Wish could be very, very tough for most teams to deal with. And also, what are your thoughts about these two? Because, like I said, this is probably my last chance of covering them, considering that Wish might actually, for being a fossil Pokemon, it might actually go extinct again from the Smogon OU. Haha, uh -huh. how about that? Joke. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I find that the reasoning behind its, its leave is very, very sad. I was really hoping that DLC was going to come before the ban. But quite frankly, when it comes to League Aspect, I think we're looking at more teams that are more fragile for Vish and being over centralized and forcing Pokemon trainers to get a Pokemon with Water Absorb. It's not great, is it? <laughs> so that's it, guys. As always, thank you for course, joining. And uh, thank you, Automatic, of course, covering this episode and getting more in-depth on why Vish is so much better than Salt in a drafting environment. And uh, join us, of course, next week for this matchup. <laughs>